Hi, this is George Mott with Enterprise DNA, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at the multi index feature of Pandas. Uh, so, the idea here is we have an index that also contains a hierarchy. If you've used Pandas before, you know Pandas data frames contain an index. So, we are going to add additional layers to that. That's going to make both indexing and reshaping the data easier depending on if you indeed have a hierarchy for your data. Okay, so for one example, we're going to use the famous Gapminder data set, and this is indeed a multi-index here. We have a hierarchy, so a continent drills into countries, and every country contains multiple years. So we can manipulate this index, and things are going to be a lot easier to code when we're using this multi-index. So we're, we're going to look at slicing and also reshaping uh, the Gapminder data set. So I will boot up a Jupyter Notebook, and I will see you there. OK, so we're going to use the Gapminder data set. If you don't have this installed, you want to do pip install Gapminder. Uh, I'm going to bring in pandas as well. I'm using the Anaconda distribution of Python. In that case, that pandas is going to be installed already. Uh, we do an import Gapminder. And then we will take a look at this data. All right, so you're going to see here again, we have an index, or hierarchy, I should say. We have continent, country, and then year. All right, currently the index is just numeric like this. And we're going to set our own index right now. And the way we're going to do that is gapminder. We're going to set the index. We're going to set it on continent, uh, country, and then year. Uh, in place equals true. So what this is doing is just saving the results on over itself so we don't have to call the variable twice. It's just a little more efficient. And now you'll see that we have the index here. So continent, country, year, and this is our multi-index. OK, so a couple things we can do here. Now let's say, for example, that I wanted everything in, in the Europe continent. So I wanted to filter or slice this data frame. So I can use gapminder lock. Now you may be familiar with lock uh, from other circumstances in, in pandas. It works a lot more easily when we ha are doing it by the index. So all we have to do here is just say Europe. We don't have to specify the name of the column or anything like that. And I'm going to run this, and there we see everything there. OK. Now, this, is a, this exists I'm sorry, in a hierarchy. So let's say, for example, we only wanted the data from the United Kingdom. Now, it seems like we would be able to just slice this by, uh, let's do United Kingdom. But this is going to be a problem because when we when we index this, we're kind of stuck to using the hierarchy. So we need to start with the first level and then drill to the second and the third, etc. Uh, so this isn't going to work. So I'm going to comment this out because uh, I don't want to keep busted code in my script. Uh, let's actually rerun that. And then what I'm going to do here is gapminder lock. So if I wanted to include multiple levels, what I can do is pass it in here. This is called a tuple. I'm going to do Europe, right? And then I'm going to do United Kingdom. And I could even go a step further and put 1997. And now we can see here's the result of that row in that case. Um, another nice thing with the multi index is that it's a lot easier to reshape the data. What I mean by that is let me call, uh, I'm going to do gapminder pivot. I'm going to do gapminder unstack. So if I need to reshape this data set for some reason, I'm going to print this. And you'll see that now we have the continent, country, and then year along the columns. right? So we, we basically just uh, unpivoted, or I guess this would be pivoted, uh, the data. And this is a lot easier to do by the index. There are ways to do this when you're not working with the index in pandas. This is a lot easier to, to do when you're using it this way. Um, now, let's say you wanted to do that in the opposite direction. All I would need to do is unpivot. And we're going to do gapminder pivot. Uh, if that was unstacking, then this is stacking. Gapminder pivot, actually unpivot, run this. And this is really our initial data set. 
except we still have the index here. Now, what if you want to get rid of this index and reset it and change it to something else? All you need to do in that case is gapminder unpivot. We're going to reset index. We're going to make that in place again. We don't have to save over itself. It's just a little more efficient. Gapminder unpivot print that and then we're back to our original data and we have the index, right? Just the numeric starting at zero because Python is zero-based indexing. Okay, so that's everything for multi-index. Let's recap here. Okay, so you may not know this, but pandas was initially named after panel data. It's really meant to work with panel data, which is a specific type of time series data with multiple categories. So in that case, having a hierarchy really makes sense, right? Being able to index by the category and then the date, which is kind of what we did uh, in the Gapminder data set. Uh, this works really well if you're working with unique rows or trying to find multiple columns. Um, as far as the performance, that may be a question, you know, is this more computationally efficient to use the multi-index? It could be the index, it's, it's not necessarily. If you're merging, it, it, it probably will be, but we weren't merging here. We were just uh, operating and accessing, indexing, reshaping, things like that. So that's not necessarily the benefit, although the, the coding efficiency is definitely a big benefit here. Okay, so that's everything for multi-index. Hope this is something that you can use. You learned something a little new about pandas and hope to see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.